there was one race on the ballot that didn't have an incumbent. And I think this was an opportunity to have, no matter what, it was going to be a change, right? But were parents willing to put someone in there who really wanted to focus on education? The answer appears to be no. And I want you to familiarize yourself with the name of the candidate in this race for position two, who's winning, because we're gonna end up talking about her quite a bit on the show, I think. She went under the radar because of Talana Reed's insanity, but it turns out she's got some insanity of her own. But Frank Durocher, um, who really seemed to be laser focused on improving educational outcomes, he is trailing 44% to 56% for progressive candidate Jess Turtelot Palumbo. So I haven't talked on the show about Jess Turtelot Palumbo, I think because we were so focused on some of the other races, but I want you to meet uh, what will probably be the Olympia School Board's newest member. My name is Jess Turtelot Palumbo, Olympia School Board uh, candidate for District 2. And there's been a lot of conversation about safety and about SROs being put back into schools and um, taking the words police and renaming them into um, around engagement, around collaboration and public safety. And while I understand the intention behind this, and at first, I'm, I'm going to be completely honest as a white person, like my first thought was like, oh, that's an interesting idea. And then like I took a couple more seconds um and i was like that's not an interesting idea at all that's an idea that i feel like is creating space for white folks to feel safe or to feel good about doing something um about the racism within law enforcement and it doesn't take away from the fact that Law enforcement and SROs come from the seed of racism. And you can rename them something, and you can try to create different branches, but if that seed is still there, it's going to create the same problem. And that same problem is going to tell our students um, who are marginalized, uh, who have disabilities, who come from the BIPOC community, that their safety is less important, that they don't matter. And they do matter. And it's not just that they matter, it's that they're phenomenal. They have incredible races and are amazing leaders, but we don't say that enough, right? Like, we don't tell that enough. And by voting SROs into schools, we are going to silence them. And we are going to cause fear. Do you hear that? Do you hear that, Nicole? Listen closely. Do you hear it? <laughs> that's that's the sound of me dying a little bit inside. <laughs> <laughs> Why? 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 That is <sighs> Jess Turtelot Palumbo, who is going to be the newest member of the Olympia School Board, who is winning handedly over a guy who seems, by all accounts, very rational and normal and wants to, oh my gosh, the horror focus on educational outcomes. And this is what we're going to get. More of the same in Olympia. America's wokest school district doesn't want cops in schools, even though they've had a ton of issues at Capitol High School related. I mean, what was it? Three issues in the first week of the year, two yeah, weeks of the year campus. with guns. Mm -hmm. And in, truly insane stuff. Um, so anyway, we, we asked Alicia Perkins to, to join us today. Alicia Perkins, uh, not only are both she and her husband alum of the Olympia School District, they have now sent four kids through the Olympia School District, and she started uh, a couple years ago trying to take it upon herself to expose some of the things that were happening there around political and social agendas. She started a really good substack you should check out called OSD Rescue, where she details some of this stuff. Uh, and so I asked her to come on knowing that she would probably be pretty disappointed in the results from last night. Alicia Perkins, how many drinks did you have last night? <laughs> I mostly had some coffee, you know, to try to get through it. I uh, had a little headache, but I'm here. Yeah, we laugh so we don't cry. This is really, um, I've got to imagine for you as a parent who wants to get back to quality education, worst case scenario. 
It is. Um, I was, I knew we were in an uphill battle. I knew that the primary results were very similar. So um, it, it was going to be really, really difficult to either change those bo- votes or get more people out. And we just didn't. Yeah. Well, and I should say, maybe not worst case scenario, because it looks like Talana Reed, at least, will will no longer be on the school board. So given that that was really um, her extreme views and her extreme statements, that's got to be a little bit of a relief. It is a relief. Um, She's now run for two positions in the city and lost. So hopefully the voters have told her, you know, you can't be in charge of anything. That's what I'm hoping. Yeah. But then I'm turning my sights now to this Jess Turtelot Palumbo. We just played a video that she posted. Um, I actually, I I think she went under the radar for us just because Talana Reed was so, so extreme. But it sounds like she holds a lot of the same views about police and and education. Yeah, and she and Talana Reed actually campaigned throughout together. So uh, they have the same ideology. It's going to be the same thing. Um, And it's really unfortunate because Frank DeRozier, who was running for what Jess uh, appears to be winning on, uh, would have been a much more moderate, balanced candidate. And now we're going to end up with the same thing. Yeah, how do you make sense of that? I mean, when I watch that video that, uh, that again, we just played, and I'm thinking, gosh, how can any rational person want that individual on a school board versus Frank, who, you know, is focused on what I feel like every parent should want their school board focused on, quality educational outcomes? How do you make sense of it? Well, it looks like there was about a 28% voter turnout for OSD elections. So that means that, you know, 70% of actual registered voters are not voting. So I don't know the answer to whether they're just apathetic at this point, or they genuinely don't know this information still, which is, you know, getting hard to believe because the Olympia School District has been covered locally. You've done it extensively nationally. Um, these are not minor issues that have been covered. These are absolutely crazy things that have been happening. So for people not to know um, or still vote for the same thing is just puzzling. Well, and maybe maybe it's that we genuinely cannot put ourselves in their minds and in their shoes and really understand that worldview. I mean, I know I have a really hard time understanding how people can vote for some of the candidates that they do. If it's, you know, intentional, like, yes, I support everything they say and do, or if it's just, oh, you know, her name looks cool. Let me let me circle in the, the, the uh, ballot for her. So what do you do from here, Alicia? You know, you have dedicated so much time and energy to trying to rid the Olympia School Board of this sort of ideology only to see it prevail time and time again. What do you do from here? Well, I think from here, um, you know, I I do need to think of this as baby steps that you, you know, sometimes it takes multiple election cycles to really have people understand what's going on and change things. So I think that we have really, uh, this movement has awakened many people as to what's going on in school boards, and it might take a couple election cycles. And I think things are just going to get worse before they get better. I mean, the Olympia School District will be closing schools um, probably within the next year is their estimate uh, because of the decline in enrollment. And one thing that they will not acknowledge is that a large part of that decline in enrollment are students actually leaving because of them, because of they've become too political, too ideological, too ideological, too crazy. Um, and until they acknowledge that, this is just going to keep happening. And if they, if we just keep voting in the same people, these are the exact same people that have overseen the massive decline in the Olympia School District over the last few years. They voted in the same thing. So there's a part of me that's like, well, we have to respect that. That's obviously what Olympia voters want. So you can have it. Um you know, and then from here, I think it's just still a matter of informing people, keeping on it, holding them accountable for the kids that are still there. Yeah. So I can take it to that to mean that you're still in the fight. I'm still in the fight. You know, my my last one graduated um, in June. Um, she actually just joined the Marines. So we're going to be shipping her off soon. Um, but I do, I, a message that I've always tried to give people is that this is not just a parent's fight. This is a community fight. Communities are in charge of their local school district. Um, taxes pay for the local school district. You need to know what's going on. You need to hold them accountable. You need to demand fiscal responsibility. Um, it is a community involved 
endeavor. And so, it, you know, it, it can't just be like parents are in charge of this. And if we could get that message out that, you know, we need you, even if you don't have kids, to care about your community schools, that's, you know, something that I'm going to still be pursuing. Yeah, well, I'm glad. Well, you've just been invaluable for us as we navigate sort of some of these stories and what you've exposed has been uh, really important. And and I I, uh, think you're right that this is baby steps. And we saw Seattle get much worse before. Hopefully it's getting better with these latest election results. And so, um, you know, maybe that's the case in Olympia. Uh, Well, Alicia, thank you. And also when you send your youngest off to the Marines, give her a big hug from all of us, a thank you, and then a hug and tell her to be safe. Thank you, Brandy, so much for everything. Yeah, we appreciate Alicia Perkins trying to, you know, keep what's happening in the Olympia School District in the public spotlight. Again, you should check out her Substack OSD Rescue. She has a lot of good stuff on there. But I could just see she's she's beaten down. She's just uh, I don't blame her. I mean, she's put so much work in and to see that school district continue to go the way of activism is so, so incredibly disappointed. And it has real, real consequences and implications. I-